In a not so dramatic turn of events, James Wan, Warner Brothers Discovery are trying to separate Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, the sequel to the highest grossing DC character in movies ever. Aquaman, the first one, went well over a billion dollars worldwide. They're trying to separate that from the previously established DCEU and certainly this enormous just catastrophe, this enormous blunder that is the Flash and everything that's going on there. I've certainly covered in depth all the things that are going on with the Flash and just what a tragedy that is. That is a lot of money flushed down the toilet and that's a big problem here because Warner Brothers Discovery, they have acquired quite the problem when it comes to these DC films. Now it's DC Studios. We got the DCU coming up, but the DCEU actually hasn't produced a, a money-making film since the Aquaman movie in 2015. I believe Shazam broke even. And then the other six DCEU movies all lost money, obviously culminating with what's going on with The Flash. They got two more left. We've got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and Blue Beetle. I personally believe Blue Beetle is a lost cause. They should probably write it off as a tax credit or something like that, or just put it directly on HBO Max or Max or whatever the hell they call it. But there is potential, obviously, for the Aquaman movie to do pretty well. And some of what James Wan is saying, while it does not line up with what he said earlier, and certainly doesn't line up with what Jason Momoa was saying earlier, is probably the best case scenario and what they actually should do with Aquaman moving forward because if it wasn't supposed to be associated with The Flash and the DCEU, would Aquaman really have been in the Flash movie? Like, think about it. But James Wan is saying something else. Two weeks after The Flash opened in theaters and proceeded to completely bomb, with analysts predicting the film will cost Warner Brothers Discovery around $150 million in losses. James Wan is trying to prevent the same from happening to Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom. Wan spoke with comicbook.com telling them, well, Aquaman, even the first film, has always been a very standalone film. That was always our approach, that it kind of lives in its own world, and that's kind of how we've approached The Lost Kingdom as well. And I do not blame James Wan for coming out there and saying this. After after seeing what happened, obviously, with Black Adam, with what happened to The Flash and what happened to all the previous movies, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, I wouldn't want my movie associated with that stuff either. Even though, obviously, the Aquaman movie was very successful, went over a billion dollars as a DCEU film, but it has certainly lost its luster since then, if it ever actually even had any luster. If I were Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslov and James Gunn and Peter Safran, I would just kind of take what... James Wan said there and, and just decide that's how it was always supposed to be. Just make Aquaman a standalone character. Let him have his own standalone trilogy that finishes off with something else if Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is actually successful. Because the reason that it was so successful in the first place was not because the domestic numbers just blew up and it was just this eye-popping success or whatever. It blew up enormously in Asia, specifically in China, and they wanted to support the movie and I think there's a pretty good chance, maybe not quite to the tune that it did before, that this Aquaman sequel is actually going to turn some profit and actually put some smiles on the Warner Brothers Discovery executives' faces before the end of 2023. This is literally their only hope to make any money from any of these DC characters, at least on the big screen, until Superman Legacy begins. Obviously, it's supposed to be 2025, but I don't believe that'll happen, but... You know, we shall see. Maybe they're really, really fast. Maybe they can get a Superman movie out in two years. I kind of doubt it. So they're going to be sitting there staring at all this red that's right in front of them and potentially one beacon of hope, this Aquaman universe. And, and they should just treat it as its own standalone thing like the Dark Knight trilogy, like the Joker movie, like the Batman movie. Not everything has to be connected. And to what James Wan was saying there, it's not like the first Aquaman movie was just delved in DCEU lore and there are all these tie-ins. It was very loosely connected to what they had been doing in the DCEU previously. So just cut all the ties. They should just forget the DCEU ever existed. But Jason Momoa as Aquaman is potentially an enormous box office franchise. Now, I know they want to make Jason Momoa Lobo, and I'm kind of in agreement with that. Certainly, Jason Momoa looks like Lobo. He's got the personality of a Lobo-like character, at least when he's even playing Aquaman. Doesn't really feel like Arthur Curry. And if you want to have Lobo in the DCU, and it sounds like that's what Peter Safran and potentially James Gunn, what? You could still do this Aquaman stuff on the side. Just pretend that it was never supposed to be connected. But we do know this is all spin, because it doesn't actually line up with what anyone was saying before The Flash absolutely bombed. I think they really thought they were going to make some money. That trailer on the Super Bowl was absolutely hot. A lot of people were talking about it. Unfortunately for them, Ezra Miller in a dead shared comic book universe in the big screen was just too much to overcome. 
They lost a lot of money, but I think they were going to do something with this because this is what Jason Momoa had to say when he spoke to Total Film about how Aukband would continue in Peter Safran and James Gunn's DC Universe they are building with Superman Legacy. Momoa stated, Peter Safran's my producer on Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom and is a dear friend. I absolutely think Aquaman will be involved in the DCU. It's on, bro. There's no one bigger than Aquaman. Since Jason Momoa talked to Total Film, we have actually heard from James Gunn, and he has specifically stated that the first DCU character is Blue Beetle, not Aquaman, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're looking at big box office kind of thing. You know, the guy from Cobra Kai isn't exactly a big box office attraction. He hasn't exactly made a whole lot of money on the big screen, whereas Jason Momoa as Aquaman has made a billion dollars and potentially could make $2 billion because we still have the sequel coming out. So it sounds like they are going to place the Blue Beetle, even though that's almost guaranteed to fail really badly, into the DCU. And they're going to now skip out on Aquaman, even though Jason Momoa had previously thought that his Aquaman movie was going to be a part of the DCU. And certainly he went in and did the cameo for the Flash movie because it was supposed to be connected to that as well. And it feels like they're trying to remove all the strings, all those strands of connectivity between the Aquaman and all the failure of the DCEU, as well as the future of the DCU probably, which is very interesting stuff. And it also flies in the face with what director James Wan had actually said previously. When the Hollywood reporter's Brian Davids asked, how much adjusting have you had to do to December's sequel, Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom, to fit DC's reset by way of the Flash? James Wan responded, I've had to make adjustments all along the way. The DCU has been through a lots of different versions, and one of the things that was challenging about this film was keeping track of what's going on. That interview was not that long ago, and obviously at that point, James Wan, the director, thought that the Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom was supposed to tie in somewhat, indirectly, maybe directly, to the Flash and whatever the fallout of that was, so there would be some type of continuity between the DCEU movies, even though the DCEU at this point is dead, which actually kind of seems stupid. I would have just let James Wan do his thing. As far as all the directors that have worked on DC projects, certainly there are other directors that have had bigger blockbusters. I mean, Joss Whedon did direct the Justice League Abomination. I don't know. I don't even know what to call that thing. But, you know, he did the original Avengers movie. He certainly had a bigger blockbuster in his past than James Wan has. But I think of all the DC directors, including Zack Snyder, and I know a lot of people like that guy. I'm not one of them. I would say that James Wan is the most talented director to ever work on a DCEU movie. And it certainly played out with a ton of success worldwide for that Aquaman movie. And that's why I believe this is probably the smartest play. There's a future for James Wan in Aquaman and Jason Momoa as Aquaman, but it's probably not in the DCU and it's certainly not being a part of the DCEU, which is already dead at this point. And the spin is on. They're trying to save the movie, which still, of the two left, this is the one that actually has the potential to make some money. The other problem with this one is though, what the hell were these guys thinking? Guess what the budget on Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was? $200 million, the same budget as The Flash. Why do they keep greenlighting movies that would cost over $150 million, upwards of $200 million for a film franchise that never really worked? Yes, there were some big box offices at the beginning before everyone realized just how bad Zack Snyder's like DC Universe was going to be. And then it just kind of trailed off and they just kept adding money to the budgets rather than constraining them and bringing them down. I don't know what they were thinking with The Flash and I don't know why an Aquaman movie costs $200 million. I understand there's a lot of effects because there's a lot of underwater shots and stuff like that, but there's got to be a better way, bro. Why does it feel like these guys are like gambling, like high stakes gambling with movies? Indiana Jones, $300 million. The Flash, $200 million. Aquaman, $200 million. I have a feeling the day of the super enormous budget action film it's pretty much numbered because just some bad word of mouth or maybe some bad press or i don't know you hired ezra miller to be in your movie can absolutely tarnish everything and you can end up losing hundreds of millions of dollars in the process but uh hey we shall see what happens with the aquaman movie as far as the dcu which apparently aquaman they thought it was going to be a part of that, but it's not going to be a part of that. James Gunn's DCU, they've already announced like the first 10 projects or whatever. I don't think this is ever going to work. In fact, I believe because of the box office trending of the DCEU and the fact that James Gunn has already put his name on the flop that was The Flash, there's a good reason to believe his DCU is dead before the Superman Legacy movie ever even comes out. Definitely check this out right now. There's also a link in the video description.